this is Jessie of Crafted to Bloom, and today I'll be teaching you how to make wild roses. You'll need doublet crepe paper. This one here is blush and chiffon. I have 180 grams yellow crepe, 18 gauge wires in various lengths, green floral tape, templates, pastels or chalk in orange and in yellow, and an applicator brush. First, what we'll need to do is we will need to prepare the center for the stamen. So take a length of the green floral tape. Take a length of your floral tape. Take your 18 gauge wire, and we're going to create this little bulb at the top so it looks like a Q-tip. And that will create the center of the wild rose. So normally, I'll um, start right at the top, stretch the floral tape to activate the glue, start at the top, and I'm going to just wrap it around the top till we get to the end. At the end, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over my floral tape so that it thickens the floral tape up. At that point, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue to wrap, 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 and you'll see that it's starting to form a bulb. At some point, when I feel that it's big enough, and it looks kind of like a Q-tip end to me, I'll take my floral tape, wrap it along the top so that I get the smooth edge of the top, and then I'm going to wrap the rest of the ball downwards so that I get this bulb that's very smooth, and I'll just finish up the floral tape and wrap it down the stem. The great thing about floral tape is that it's um, quite malleable, so I like to kind of push it down and squeeze it, and that way I can get a really nice round bulb at the top. So that's our centerpiece. Now we're gonna create this yellow part here, which is the yellow fringed stamen. I have here the piece of 180 gram Italian florist crepe. Um, I think it's in lemon or buttercup, one of the other. It doesn't really matter. It just depends on what type of yellow you like. And what I'm, what I've done is I've cut. I've cut along the edge here. So this here is two inches, and I've cut here along the edge to get a strip like this. And this strip is stretched. So give it a good stretch. Give it a good stretch. And it's going to lose a lot of the creasing. Once you've done that, I'm just going to cut a piece that is about five cent, uh, so five inches long. Cut that. I like to bulk fringe, um, so in this case I can make two at once, and I normally just to save time uh, fold it in half so that it's not too thick. There's four layers, but it's not too too thick. And then at that point, I take the scissors. And I'm going to fringe. I'm going to fringe about three quarters of an inch up, so not necessarily half of this width, but a little bit less. And that's about three quarters of an inch. So to do that, I'm going to just slowly start fringing. The thickness of the fringe really depends on how you want the flower to look like. I prefer fringes that are very finely cut. But if you're going to make a large, large flower, then it likely isn't necessary for the fringe to be too, too fine. 
it might not actually even look proportional to that large flower. I'm using spring handled scissors, which are my favorite to use for fringing. They're fantastic because they bounce back and they're much easier on my hand. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and you see that there is a chunk there that I've missed because of the fold. Just go back in there and fringe it up. Also check the ends. The ends tend to be thicker. So then I just go back and clean that up. Alright, so once we've done this, and I'm again, I am bulk, um, I'm, I'm bulk cutting, I'm going to actually cut it diagonally to reduce the bulk when I actually wrap it. Take a pair of scissors, I'm going to cut just below the fringe on one end, and then I'm going to cut diagonally to the bottom corner of the other end. And that should do the trick. I'm going to fold it. And I like to have stamens that are a little bit unruly, not so straight. So I tend, I tend to like to manipulate it a little bit. This is how I do it. I'll just do this. Or if you want some people twist it, this one I find doesn't really need to be twisted. And then I take the ends of it here and I just dab it onto the pan pasta. And now you see that the tips of the stamen have little orange bits um, of color on it, and that's where my stamen's going to really um, show up. Let's do it slowly. Alright, I'm going to put this aside. A short piece of floral tape to help us adhere the fringe to the center. Again, pull it to activate the glue. We're going to take one of these stamens. And we are then going to start on this wider end. We're going to place the center just on top of the fringe so that the bottom of the fringe lies about maybe half a centimeter down from the top of the Q-tip end. So the great thing about floral tape is that if you do make a mistake, you can unravel it quite quickly and easily without it being secured permanently. So you'll see now here, my fringe falls just below the tip of the center. And we're just going to roll and roll, aligning the top of the fringe. And then we're going to take this floral tape that's been activated we're going to wrap it along the base of the fringe. Just pull tight, and as you pull, you go down the fringe. Just go all the way down and wrap the rest of the stem. So now you've got something like this. Put your finger in there, into the center, and just open it up gently. If you want, you can always use um, a tool. For example, I, a, lot, a lot of times I use my 16 gauge and I just kind of poke it out like this. And that way I don't get pan pastel on my, on my fingers. And I'm gonna put this aside because we are going to create the petals. Here I'm using a double crepe or double-sided crepe. It's Germany made and it's really nice to work with because it has such fantastic stretch. It's a little bit heavier than fine crepe. They come in a multitude of colors. This particular one is uh, blush and chiffon. And what I've done to make it easier for me is I've taken a fold that's this size. 10, uh, 10 inches 
uh, wide and I've taken it and I've just cut a strip of it off about two and a half inches or whatever the height of your um, template might be. So in this particular case I have three templates. I have a large, medium, and a small. And today I think I'm going to make a medium one for this tutorial. And um, a medium one would fit very easily and quite comfortably into the strip of paper. I'm going to work with the, um, the pink side up, but it doesn't really matter when you cut it. It's only when you start manipulating the petals that it matters. What I like to do is I like to place the template on top of the strip and then accordion style fold the strip along the sides of the petal. So here I've got five folds, one, two, three, four, five. And at this point I'm going to cut it. I'm going to use the template as my guide to cut out the petal. Now I don't do this all the time. I don't use a petal template every time. A lot of times I cut freehand, but in this particular case, uh, because there is only five petals and um, the, the shape is a little bit particular for this flower, I decided to do a template. Also, you might not necessarily want to cut five layers of crepe paper at the same time. The doublet is thin enough to do that comfortably without you altering the, um, the shape or the edges of the petal. You might not always want to do that. All right. So now we have five petals. I'm just going to put them facing up in the way that, in the color that I want them to appear in um, in the flower. So now it's time to work on the petals. We're going to take this petal and we are going to just lightly color it halfway with yellow hand pastel. Now you can also use chalk or any other type of um, color applicator. You can definitely use alcohol inks, um, colored pencils, whatever you'd like. I just find pastels are a little bit easier to apply. Chalk as well. If you do use chalk, um, do color it on and then kind of rub it with your fingers to get the chalk into the grooves of the crepe paper. So now after that we've colored it, I'm going to take it um, and I'm going to start manipulating it. I'm just going to gently open it up, just the top part. I'm not cupping yet significantly, I'm just literally pulling it apart. In the center, at the dip of the heart, we're going to very carefully flute the top, the center part, as if we're tearing the piece of paper. Then we're going to curl back the edges of the heart at the top like so. You can use a hat pin, you can use a skewer, you can use even your scissors. I'm using a 16 gauge here because it's readily available to me and I just cut off a section of it whenever this, if, whenever I lose it essentially. Um, now we're going to look at the bottom of the petal. What we're going to do is we're going to squeeze it and twist. The twisting essentially just um, keeps the the pinch of the petal in place so that it doesn't unravel. And we're gonna do that with the rest of them. Okay, so pull, flute the top very carefully, curl, and pinch and twist.
want you to try using your scissors. Which work just as well. Okay, so now we have five and we are going to take our center. We're going to need a strip of color tape. Pull it to activate it. And I like to start by placing the floor tape on the stem, wrapping around once before I start actually sticking on petals. I'm gonna take the petal, flip it over so that the back side is facing up me and the front side is facing the bottom. Hold it and wrap the floor tape around it and make sure you pull it as you wrap. That way it keeps it nice and taut. I'm going to stick on my second petal. It's going to be placed right beside the first petal, overlapping the first petal by about half of the petal. Same thing, I wrap it around with the floral tape. Third one, same thing, placed right beside it, overlapping the second petal about halfway. Uh, fourth petal, do the same thing, overlapping the third petal by half. The last petal, the fifth petal, is going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do is we are going to slide it between the first petal and the fourth petal. We're just going to slide it in so that it overlaps the fourth petal from the back and it itself is being overlapped by the first petal. And this way we can create a perpetual overlap where we don't know where the first and last petal lie. And this is possible because the bottom of the petals have been squeezed and twisted very tightly so that the, uh, the bottom is very, very small and that allows us to kind of slip it behind. So this is what it looks like now. You can tell it's perpetually overlapping. There's no first or last petal. What we can do is we can just open it up gently. Take your finger in there and just really just kind of kind of um, massage the tip of the, the Q-tip top. And that way you can kind of open up the stamen without really pushing it too much. Now what I like to do at this stage is I take a look at it and I think, you know, what do I like about it, what I don't like about it. I like the fact that this petal is kind of drooping a little bit. I love that. This one here is a little bit shapeless. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to shape it by cupping it slightly just a little bit and that kind of gives it a little bit of um, shape to it that kind of complements this one here. This one might benefit with a little bit more of a flute so I'm just going to go ahead and flute it a little bit more. I think I'm going to do the same with this. So now I've got this flower that I'm pretty satisfied with. I like the way that it falls. I like the way it kind of, all the petals kind of face a different direction. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna finish off the stem. Now this stem right now is fairly short. Normally my stems would be longer. Um, but for this particular flower, I actually really like to keep the stems short and kind of gather them up and have them staggered at different heights. For example, this one here, I might stagger it down here. So kind of like more of a, um, um, so more of a spray flower type um, of, of um, stems. Uh, so in order to finish this though, just take your floor tape. I'm just going to take it and just wrap the rest of it. If you'd like, you can add calyxes to the bottom of, to the bottom of the flower, so right here, along here. Normally with roses, I will put five calyxes, and uh, it also covers up the stem. But in this particular flower, the reason why I make it usually is because um, I need 
beautiful flowers that are quick to make and that I could uh, make very easily in different colors without having to add a leaf or adding calyxes, which adds extra time to, to the flower. Hi, I'm Jessie Chu of Crafted to Bloom, and I'm absolutely thrilled that you decided to participate in this session to learn how to make a paper flower with me. You just finished watching two lessons of my Wild Rose online course, and the entire course will be available for you to watch at your leisure until the end of November, and that information will be provided to you at the end of the session. If you're interested in learning more about paper flowers, or the art of paper flowers, or the business of paper flowers, make sure to check out the Paper Florist Collective and also my podcast, Paper Talk, where my colleague Quinn Wynn and I talk about all things paper flowers. Bye for now. I hope to see you in my online courses. Stay creative, stay safe, and keep making beautiful things. Bye.